welcome dear students today we shall do the political implications of feminist movement 99% of women have been deprived of education equality property rights and social status women were restricted to the four walls of the house she had no freedom to take decisions at all in fact she was not allowed to take up decisions regarding herself or that issue which affects her like the reproductive rights many social reformers have brought in changes like raja ram mohan roy eradicated sati system ishwar chandra vidyasagar found framed the widow remarriage act etc women have always been facing physical harassment mental agony dowry problems polyandry where one women will have more husbands inequality domestic violence education was also denied to women but then women came together and realized that they are being exploited and started social movements feminist movements tried to overcome women exploitation and atrocities the government of india has taken measures to empower women by providing constitutional facilities first one is the constitutional opportunities article 14 15 15 3 16 34 8 and 42 provides for the removal of inequality and discrimination based on gender article 14 specifies equality before law it is also a fundamental right all of us are born equal hence all of us will face law also equally that means all of us are equal under the eyes of law article 15 says prohibition of discrimination on the grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth Article 16 No citizen shall on the grounds of religion race sex place of birth be ineligible or discriminated any employment or office which means to say no discrimination should happen on the basis of caste religion etc Article 42 spe- specifies it is a non government organization which we it if it is a non government organization operating in the sphere of protection of human rights facilitating the protection of civic and political rights and freedoms as well as protection of fundamental rights next legislative measures here we are talking about different issues rape kidnapping and using women for illegal purpose torture for dowry under ipc section 376 it tells us whoever commits a rape shall be punished with rigorous imprisonment of either description for a term which shall not be less than 10 years but which may extend to imprisonment for life and shall also be liable for fine that means they have to pay a fine for whatever they have committed next under ipc 363 kidnapping and using women for illegal purposes they will be punished and will also be imprisoned under article 498 it is torture for dowry torture for dowry on a woman by a husband 
or a relative of the husband is punishable. Special laws. There are a few special laws which has been made by the constitution. Family Court Act of 1954, Special Marriage Act 1954, Hindu Marriage Act 1955, the Dowry Prohibition Act 1961, Protection of Women Against Domestic Violence Act 2005, Abolition of Child Marriage Act 2006. Under the Family Court Act of 1954, family courts were set up under Section 3 of this Act. The main objective of the Family Court was to provide speedy settlement with expenses and formalities in disputes relating to marriage and family and to make an agreement between the parties for their reconciliation. Special Marriages Act is an act of the Parliament of India. It provides for civil marriage for people of India and all Indian nationals in the foreign countries irrespective of religion or faith. Next, Hindu Marriage Act 1955 was intended to secure the rights of marriage for the bride and the groom who are Hindus and are bound under the sacred bond of marriage under any ceremony. The Dowry Prohibition Act of 1961 specifies no individual should give dowry or should they take dowry. So both the girl's parents as well as the boy's parents are punishable. Protection of Women Against Domestic Violence Act 2005 came into force in the month of October. This act is to provide a quick, easy and affordable civil remedy in the form of protection order and immediate relief to the victims of any kind occurring within the family. The aggrieved can seek protection against any physical, sexual, verbal, emotional or economic abuse. This law for the first time recognizes a women's right to a violence-free home. And the next one is Abolition of Child Marriage Act 2006. Third one, special privileges for women. There is a National Women's Commission which was established in 1992 with a view to analyze the legal programs and to go into details of the constitutional provisions and make necessary recommendations to government for further improvements in that regard. Fourth point, reservations in the local bodies. Through 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment, 33% of seats are reserved for women in local self-government. Under the 73rd amendment, it specifies the reservation into the Panchayat Raj at the village level, taluk level and the district level for scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, other backward classes as well as for women. As per the 74th constitutional amendment, it specifies reservations in the urban local self-government that is municipalities, municipal corporation for scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, other backward class as well as for women. Fifth, National Action Plan for Girl Child to provide safe, bright and a strong future for the girls this program was implemented. Sixth, National Policy on Women Empowerment a Department of Women and Child Welfare under the Secretariat of Human Resource Development framed a national policy 
for the empowerment of women. Some of the programs and plans termed by the government of India for women are Employment Assurance Scheme 1993, National Social Assistance Program 1995, Swarna Jayanti Shahari Rojgar Yojana 1997, Jawahar Gram Samruddhi Yojana 1999, Swarna Jayanti Gram Swaraj Yojana 1999, Indira Awaz Yojana 1999. Coming to the first one, Employment Assurance Scheme 1993. To provide gainful assured employment, particularly during the lean agricultural season, is manual work to at least one able-bodied person in the poor families. National Social Assistance Program 1995 is a welfare program. It is to provide support to aged persons, widows, disabled persons and bereaved families on death of the primary breadwinner, Suvarna Jayanti or Swarna Jayanti Shahari Rojgar Yojana 1997 provides gainful employment to urban, unemployed and underemployed poor through encouraging self-employment ventures. Next, Indira Awaz Yojana. The government of Karnataka has also empowered women through the following measures. The Udyogini Yojana, Mahila Tarbeti Yojana, Rehabilitation Program of the Devadasis, Step Yojana, that is Support Training and Employment Program for Women. Stri Shakti Yojana, Santwana Yojana, Amrita Yojana, Bhagya Lakshmi Yojana. Udyogini Yojana encourages women to take loans from banks and other financial institutions to take up income generation activities. After the sanction of the loan, training is provided for three days, then the loan amount is released. Next, the Mahila Terebeti Yojana training is provided to women. Third, rehabilitation program for Devadasis. The government has taken the responsibility of rescuing, care, protection, welfare and rehabilitation of Devadasi women. They shall be provided counselling and awareness and involve them in the vocations. Step Yojana Support Training and Employment Program for women. This aims at providing skills that gives employability to women and to provide competencies and skill that enables women to become self-employed entrepreneurs. For women aged above 16 years, for maybe for piggery, goats, handicrafts, etc. Next, Stri Shakti Yojana. This Stri Shakti was launched in the year 2001 and is being implemented throughout the state to empower women and make them self-reliant. Stri Shakti groups are formed to inculcate savings habit. About 20 women members below poverty line join together and frame Stri Shakti groups. There is training for rural women, incentives to the groups with more savings. There are direct marketing and they also have the system of 6% interest subsidy for bank loan. So annual marketing mailers are also conducted. Santwana Yojana. To give immediate or instant medical treatment, or relief for victims of road accidents during the golden hour, that is 48 hours. Cashless treatment for them 
up to rupees 25000 is made available next amruta yojana providing basic services like water supply sewage sewerage urban transport etc to households and build amenities in the cities next is bhagya lakshmi yojana the goal is to promote both girl children below poverty line families and raise the status of a girl child financial assistance is provided to the girl child through the mother father or the guardian the child gets a health insurance cover up to rupees 25000 there is an annual scholarship of 300 rupees to 1000 rupees up to 10th standard is given parents will act get 1 lakh in case of accident and for rupees 42500 for natural death the parents can apply to the deputy director of women and child development of the respective district